Hello, welcome to the science show Curiosity for the month of August 2022. This is episode number 34. So let's start with a bit of my personal news. Uh, two books have been published last month. Both are available over the Amazon. Uh, the first book is called Life Skills. Life Skill is uh, the book of uh, you know the, the soft skills and critical thinking. That is, I would like to say it's a magnum opus of my work. I spent almost a year uh, for that book. It's available over the Prime. You know, mm. please check it out in the Amazon. The next book is called The Trees of Ramayana. Uh, you know, so there is also uh, uh, analysis of few trees from 20 trees, selected trees from the Ramayana, ethnobotany and uh, other things. Please check it out. Another book is called Textbook of Biostatistics through Pearson. It's going to release very soon, maybe in a, a couple of months. So stay tuned. I also completed the recording of the Mysteries in Science. So stay tuned for the series coming from Prasar Bharati and Vigyan Prasar. Probably it will be aired through the Doordarshan 10 series, uh, you know, science documentary. Another good news about my employer is the Central University of Punjab has been ranked, it retains rather, uh, first position among the newly established central universities, which is very good news for all of us here in Punjab and Batina. So let's review the science news from the last, uh, you know, last uh, month, right? So the biggest science news is, as you can see in my T-shirt, it's this. This is called, you know, the deep field image of the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST. James Webb has been featured so many times in Curiosity. Uh, you know, it is basically a near infrared, uh, you know, telescope. I mean, of course, it has got few telescopes, or all are infrared. This image is coming from near infrared telescope around 1.5 million kilometers away. Uh, you know, the, the I mean, the uh, uh, James Webb is 1.5 million kilometers away at the L2 Langrange point, that is the orbital, uh, which is like circular orbits, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the telescope. And the image here is 730 percentage sharper than the Hubble's same image. You can see that the you know Hubble's image versus uh, JWST's image to see that really what it is. So it's really a, a, a tiny point. If you hold a grain of sand to your arm's length, and then if you look at the night sky, that area is what this image is. You know. So uh, if you hold that like that, then you can see around uh, uh, 300. Uh, billion galaxies in it you know so it is really it's the deepest pick ever taken in the, the in the universe right so it's early universe approximately uh, 200 to 600 million just after the big bang you know the birth of the universe so it is really the deep image and uh, it's basically coming from a galaxy called smax 0723 uh, which is around 4.6 billion light away uh, light years away just after the birth of the earth you know so the image is i mean just before the uh, the the birth of the uh, you know the, the our own planet right it's 4.6 billion light years so star formation there are a few other pictures also just check it out right carina nebula star formation is also a very interesting picture which is around 7200 light years away and then the stephen squintet group of five galaxies and then the dying stars of saturn ring nebula Please do check out all these images. So you can see that in this image, uh, here you can see that six uh, diffraction spikes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is because of the mirror. You know that the main mirror has got um, 19 small, small um, uh, sub mirrors and all these mirrors have six, uh, you know, edges. So that is the reason. These are all diffraction gratings, right? Ah, yes. Another very interesting news from the last month is uh, rather alarming is the Russia. Uh, withdraws from the ISS, you know, so premature withdrawal from the International Space Station. And monkeypox has been detected in India and it has been spreading throughout the world now, you know, especially from the Europe, Western Europe. So, by the way, monkeypox itself is a misnomer because it's spread by rodents. It has nothing to do with the monkey. You know, originally it is, uh, it has been detected in monkey, but it's spread by rodents. So, uh, yeah, so and also it has, uh, you will get some protection in case you got a vaccine for the smallpox. So that's good news for those who already have vaccine from the, for the smallpox. And uh, overhemming evidences suggest that it's a sexually transmitted disease among the gay people, you know. And uh, coming to the name, of course, the James Webb is also 
uh, so many criticism against this name, right? That he was a military, uh, you know, uh, uh, person in the U.S. and uh, his decisions were against the, uh, you know, the uh, <clears throat> uh, against the gay people, you know. So uh, yes, so LGBTQ communities against uh, that name, and they are demanding for the change of the name of this James Webb. Then uh, James Lovelock has died, right? He he is a proponent of the Gaia hypothesis, which argues that the Earth itself is a giant living organism, which is quite similar to the Hindu concept, you know, uh, the Mother Earth, right? And the heat waves that is uh, that has uh, uh, ravaged the entire Europe, especially the Iberian Peninsula, the Spain and Portugal, the countries where I recently went and recorded two two months back the curiosity in the Lisbon, right? So those Iberian Peninsula is suffering the driest climate for 1,200 years. Uh, amazing, isn't it? That's alarming too because of the climate change. And another news is that the beta amyloid protein in Alzheimer's, there might be an image manipulation controversy that is going to completely change our understanding of how the Alzheimer's work and how to detect the Alzheimer's. So if this is uh, true, this has been proven true, then uh, enter uh, you know, enter research on the Alzheimer's, billions of US dollars throughout the world, you know, so many countries are spending dollars and after crores and crores of rupees too uh, for this beta myeloid. So if beta myeloid is not really involved with this Alzheimer's, then simply wasted all this amount, isn't it? Then uh, Kishore Vigyanik uh, Prashar Yojana, that is KVPY, discontinues and DST, Department of Science and Technology here in India, is going to concentrate only on their INSPIRE scheme as of now. And there's a new damselfly species uh, species from PG Wildlife Sanctuary uh, in Annamalai uh, that is called Annamalai reed tail. Uh, the scientific name is uh, Protostricta Annamalaika by Sadarshivan Nair and Samuel in 2022, the new paper. So the discovery has been published in the Journal of Threatened Taxa. You know, so it is uh, it's PG is uh, near uh, southern Kerala, near Trivandrum, right? It's, a, it's actually a Kerala uh, forest right in the western cuts then the 10th anniversary of discovering Higgs boson the uh, the power ticker you know and also there is another alarming news published last month uh, nonylphenol which is basically an endocrine disrupting chemical and also a potent carcinogen has been found 29 to 81 times that of the safe limit so the safe limit is only one parts per billion as per the uh, you know board of indian standards but it's 29 times to 81 times the toxic link policy paper uh, is uh, it's you can check it out that policy paper and there has been link of this nonylphenol with the breast cancer you know so and the highest concentration 81 coming from Batinda here in Punjab and uh, no wonder this area is also a cancer prevalent especially breast cancer prevalent you know that's very very interesting an eye-opening paper Coming to the, the discoveries, there is a new study that finds that the people consistently underestimate how much others appreciate having an old friend unexpectedly reach out to them. So old friends, so you can also uh, reach out unexpectedly to your old friend that can significantly boost both of your happiness levels. Another uh, paper is the laughter with the friends differs from the laughter with romantic partners, you know, so different kinds of laughing, right? Second story is that the more dogs in the neighborhood is linked to the less crime because dogs are vigilant and, uh, you know, so the burglars will stay away, isn't it? There might be some link, uh, you know, uh, with the dog ownership also, right? Uh, and also home ownership. Usually the, the dogs are with the home, right? So the rich people around, so, you know, so rentals don't permit these dogs, right? Now, the third story is that the argument that the climate change is not man-made has been incontrovertibly uh, disproven by the science. But still many Americans believe, you know, that the global crisis is either not real or not of our making, not human beings are not involved in it, right? In part because, do you know why? Because the media, especially the, the print as well as the, uh, you know, the visual media, uh, they give the deniers, the climate change deniers or de deniers, a platform in the name of balanced reporting. I, I covered this problem, uh, you know, 
uh, neutrality and objectivity, right? This is called argument to moderation in philosophy. Check out uh, the linked up video in the show notes of it. I've covered this topic earlier also. So giving this balanced view just because of that and asking the deniers to come in is never a justice to the good journalism, you know? So uh, a study has found that the tattoos and piercing are more common among those who experience childhood abuse and neglect. That is another alarming study. Fifth story is that the increased demand for the water is going to be the number one threat to the food security for the next 20 years, followed closely by the heat waves, droughts, income inequality, and political instability, according to which the, you know, there is an increased call for the global collaboration to build more resilient global food supply. So, yes, yeah, so water is going to be really, thing, uh, you know, uh, a big challenge. You might wonder about SDG. 17 challenges so the water is definitely going to be a big one education system neglecting the importance of the plants that is yet another very interesting paper has published so botany is being neglected and people are becoming disconnected from the botanical world at the time when the plants could help solve global environmental problem and also we have seen food crisis too right seven stories are online fake news is an existential threat to the democracy not because that most people believe in the bogus content, but because the corrosive effect it has uh, on the, uh, you know, that erode the trust among the citizens on their faith on the democratic institutions. So that is why this fake news is uh, a number one problem for democratic system. Next story is about the Japanese research. They fabricated a highly transparent solar cell. You can see through the solar cell. You know, very interesting is uh, with 2D atomic sheet. So these are near invisible uh, solar cells. Cell, cells itself is invisible. So the light passed through. Has achieved an average visible transparency of 79%. Amazing, isn't it? So we can have a window pane of these solar panels. Ninth story is about the fruit for depression. So if you eat more fruit, you can fight depression by eating fruit. Or those people who eat a lot of fruits tend to have lesser depression. Very interesting, right? Tenth is that the fungus that turns flies into the zombies attracts healthy males to mate with them, the infected fungus, you know, so that they can transmit. And, you know, uh, the female corpses, the longer the female is dead, the more alluring it becomes. So because it releases this volatile organic carbon that allure the male flies to copulate with the dead bodies, you know. So that's very interesting finding, right? 11th story is that the people with low BMI, that is uh, really, you know, low weight, less than 18.5, are in more active, not reason that they are really active, but majority of them are really low BMI because they are less hungry and run hotter. So basically it's about the, the hormone and also genetics might be the reason. It's not that they're really active in their life, you know? So, I mean, no sweeping generalization, but these are the trends as per the latest paper. Twelve stories that the research used a movement tracking watch to record 220 children's sleep habit for the four weeks across the kindergarten. And what they found is that they sleep at least 10 hours. Those who sleep 10 hours or more uh, tend to have more success in the emotional development, learning engagement and academic performance. So sleeping is really important for the kids. So this paper again argues against uh, opening up of the school so early in the morning. Here in India, you know, six o'clock, you can see the streets are full of students, you know, small babies who are going to school. So we need a policy change. The kids deserve better sleeping for their neuronal, uh, you know, uh, development. You know, we have covered this topic earlier also in this curiosity, right? Then 13, the sentence fillers like, mm, oh, or... Uh, you know what, you know, you know, all these sentence fillers are not just the nuisance to be ignored. And uh, their, uh, you know, their, their, their use results in the listeners having better memory of what they said, the memory retention, right? So there is the redundancy. So those gives a little bit space for them to think about it. So that aid in their memory retention. So it is not something you can simply ignore. This is not junk, like junk genome. Again, junk genome might have functions, you know. 14th story is that the video game players have improved decision-making abilities and enhanced brain activity. So video gaming uh, supports, this is uh, video gaming might enhance the cognitive ability. And final story is that the researchers found that 
wrist worn health devices can be combined with machine learning to detect the COVID-19 infection so early, right? Even two days before the symptoms can appear. And that could open the door for applying the use of wearable health tech for early detection of other infectious diseases too, you know. You're combining this wearable tech with the AI. So once you combine with the AI, it becomes super powerful, friends. So, you know, we haven't really tapped the utility of these wearable devices. So the future will tell you more about it, you know. So uh, in my own field, in, in botany, AI is completely transforming uh, the plant identification, you know. So sometimes the algorithm-based, uh, you know, apps are much more effective than DNA barcoding, you know. So things are really changing, friends. And also in the protein, right, in the, uh, the Google's AI has completely, uh, you know, predicted the structures of all non-proteins in the world. We covered that, the biggest development of the last year, 2021. Coming to observance, the general UN observance, 9th is Indigenous People's Day, 12th is the Youth Day, and 15th here in India is the Independence Day, you know, 19th is Humanitarian Day, 22 is the International Day for Commemorating Victims of the Acts of Violence based on religion and belief. 29th is International Day Against the Nuclear Test. By the way, 6th of August is the Hiroshima Day and 9th is the Nagasaki Day, right? And observances coming to the astronomy observance, all these are binocular events. You just need a binocular or the naked eye to see it. And Skyview app, as usual, that is my number one recommendation. You cannot see deep view image, no? You can see some of the image which I'm going to tell you. 12th is Sturgeon Moon, the moon, uh, you know, the it is the full moon of this month, Sturgeon Moon. You might have seen the, uh, you know, the biggest moon, the blue moon, or the, 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 the largest moon last month, right? And also on 12th, you can see the Moon-Saturn conjunction, both will be in the same frame. 13th is the Perseidus meteor shower, and 15th is the Moon-Jupiter conjunction, 19th is Moon-Mars conjunction, 22nd is Asteroid 4 Vesta. You can spot this asteroid, right? Right around 11.30 in the midnight. 27th is Mercury is at the greatest elongation in the east. So, uh, best day to spot the Mercury. And then on 29th, I'm looking forward for the launch of Artemis 1. Of course, it's un unmanned. By the way, Artemis, you might know, it is the replacement of the Apollo mission, you know, and it is going to be the first manned, uh, you know, the sat uh, manned mission a space mission towards moon so artemis is going to the moon so of course it's only the first mission and by 2024 nasa is planning to send uh, astronauts into the space hopefully it will this time they will include a uh, women too i'm looking forward to it coming to opportunities we are going to organize three upcoming quizzes what the first quiz is today afternoon please stay tuned okay so today's quiz is about the prime minister modi's life uh, 11th and 13th the quiz is on uh, freedom struggle, India's freedom struggle. So uh, stay tuned, be part of this community. I'm going to post everything, you know. And uh, yeah, so there will be cash prizes too. Also, there is a new call for DST Inspire. I myself is an alumni. 15th August is the deadline. Please check it out. BIRAC, uh, DBT, BIRAC, Department of Biotechnology. Ignition Grand call is open now. 16th is the deadline. COP27 Journalism Fellowship Award is open for uh, science communicators and journalists. Uh, the deadline is 19th August. MSCA, the European postdoctoral position in, in the European Union, uh, the deadline is 15th September. If you're a recent PhD holder, please apply. And of course, as usual, the Young Academy of India's Facebook page has more exciting, curiosity-driven research news every day. And do subscribe and link is in, uh, in our page, as well as uh, all the stories featured in this episode. You can find it in uh, the show notes. I hope you like this uh, special curiosity, uh, you know, show for the, the month of August. And I will see you soon with yet another exciting curiosity for the month of September, the episode number 35, next month. Till then, goodbye and please take care of yourself and if you can, someone else too as usual. Bye-bye.